Now we've got a good one here today, guys, and I'm going to be breaking down my top five best ignition poker wins to kick off this year. And after playing on ignition poker now for like seven years or so, I've been able to consistently beat the 200 no limit and 500 no limit games on a monthly basis. And really the only thing I want to start doing and getting more into this year is playing in some of the bigger tournaments online that have higher payouts like the monthly milli here on Ignition or the America's Card Room Venom. You know, the thing about playing in the bigger tournaments online is they usually happen on the weekends, like Saturdays and Sundays, typically more Sundays. It's just that you have to set aside so much time to play in those, especially if you run deep. Anytime I've run deep in a tournament, you know, they can take anywhere from like six to eight hours, sometimes longer. It just depends how many people are in the field. Um, anyways, but aside from, uh, you know, the first hand you're watching here, the next five after this, uh, you know, they were really some pretty sick winners. So uh, definitely stick around to the end. Of course, if you'd like to learn more about Ignition as I'm getting into these hands, grab a bonus for getting started here or just get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week. We'll have some links directly below in the description. Also, don't forget to tap that like. I would uh, you know, greatly appreciate it. And let's get into these hands. Now, I play... It, lately, it's been around three times a week. Uh, you know, Usually, it's between like three or four. I've been a little bit busy lately, but I have so so many recorded hands and i would say there's probably a good you know just over the last like three months i probably got another 10 after this where we had some really good wins but i just picked these out so you know you guys could see them and i think they were uh they were pretty interesting and i'm not going to say i played great in all these hands uh, there were i think a, at least a couple here i got lucky with but you know it is what it is now this first one was insane so we did have top pair um that was a good turn card for us too, obviously, but we're going to be put to the test on this river card. I mean, this this hand was really, uh, really interesting, really tricky too, I would say, but, you know, get ready for it. Okay, so the river card was basically a blank. So, I mean, you got a lot of missed things out here, missed draws, missed straight draws, missed flush draws, and you know, when he went for this play right here, it just, it seemed so unusual. And I just, you know, I really had to think about it because the truth is it's a decent amount of money here. I mean, we're playing for 500 bucks. It's not like we're playing for $5,000 or something on this hand, but you know, it just, sometimes you got to go with your gut in these spots. And that's exactly what I did right here. You know, if it doesn't make sense, then why fold? I mean, we still have top pair here. This play was just so ridiculous. And I had to think about it. Like, what are you trying to represent here? What what makes sense? And, you know, I'm thinking to myself, like, what, pocket fives? Maybe it pocket fives and he hit it on the turn or something. I don't know. And typically in these spots, uh, when somebody does this, they usually have the goods. It's just that I would say like 90% of the time they usually do when they make this play, but I made the call there. It was a good call. It's just the story didn't make a lot of sense. That's why I did it. And, uh, you know, it worked out for us. Thank God. Right. So we got a nice win right there. Um, with an unusual hand. Okay. That was definitely an unusual spot and situation, but you know, I went with my gut right there and it paid off. Okay. Next hand was pretty crazy. I posted this one maybe a month ago and I had a lot of people chiming in on it like, you know, you were a, uh, cause we're going to get it all in here pre-flop. Someone, someone went like, you were like a, it was like a 55, 45 or something ridiculous like that. Now I don't know what the exact odds are because you, when we go up all in here and let's be honest, ace queen suited, it's not the worst hand to shove all in pre-flop with, you know, it, you could be in a lot of races with hands like, you know, pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket queens would be bad. But, you know, it's not the worst play in the world to squeeze here. And that's exactly what you're going to see happen. I think we were at like a three or four bad situation or something like that. And, you know, I, uh, you know, I just went for it. Obviously, worst case scenario up against pocket aces or ace king. But other than that, you know, with an ace queen suited, we're still live against a bunch of hands. But I thought this play was ridiculous. I thought this was absolutely ridiculous. And somebody had the nerve to say like, oh, he made a good call on you. I mean, you're going to call $500 all in with this. Like, 
you shouldn't be playing 500 no limit. You should probably be playing like $10 no limit um, because there, it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. And me squeezing here, I was fine with it. Like I, I was definitely fine with it. But, you know, um, ace, if the ace queen wasn't suited, I probably wouldn't have made this play. But the fact that it was suited, it just looked so pretty to me. It was just kind of like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squeeze here. Now, when we do get called... Um, I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, hopefully it is one of those situations where it's like pocket tens or pocket jacks. And, you know, we're, you know, basically maybe not 50 50, but I've still got two live cards. And that's really what I'm hoping for. But what I did not expect here at all was this absolute ridiculous call with pocket fours. Um, yeah, I mean, we took it down right there. Thank God he didn't hit a four on the river. That would have been super disgusting. But at the same time, I mean, you know, you're playing for that much money and you're going to just call it all in with fours like that. You probably should be playing like 10 no limit. There was just no reason for it. You could easily fold right there. I mean, I get it, I guess. Like he's thinking what? I'm making that play with ace king. Even if I have ace king, like still calling with pocket fours right there is just like your whole stack. It just... It doesn't make any sense. So I liked my play. Fortunately, our hand held. We had a good flop with it. And, um, you know, he didn't spike that four on the Turner River. That would have been disgusting. So, yeah, a couple, uh, couple interesting hands to start things off here. But like I said, keep sticking around, guys, because we got, we got some more good stuff. Okay, we're at pocket nines. This, um, I want to say the flop was good here, maybe. Okay, so I think calling here is fine. Really no reason to three bet this. I think just flat calling's good. Plus, this guy um, from mid position put in the raise, so he's probably got a hand, you know, like uh, maybe mid pocket pair, maybe ace king, king queen, those kind of hands. Anyways, we hit the nine, um, and it's always nice to see that, right? So I'm just thinking slow play this one really no reason to get crazy or do anything just uh you know hopefully one of these guys this guy continues betting and um you know we can uh make some moves here on the turn now some hands to be obviously aware of you know um you got those queen jacks in there not really thinking that though um so yeah just uh gonna make the call here especially with one other player I think I made the call, or did I raise? I forget. Okay, I think I thought about raising. I don't know why, but whatever. All right, turn card was a great card. Didn't really change anything at all. Uh, the 10 didn't get there, so I mean... You know, um, we're in a good spot right here. And like I said, really what I'm hoping for is a king-queen, ace-king type of hand where it's going to be impossible to get away from. This guy just shoves on the turn, and obviously I'm like, okay, cool. Okay, so he turned over king-jack, which was actually even worse than I thought. Like, he didn't even have king-queen right there. So I was like, all right, yeah, thank you for uh, letting us stack you, sir. That was um, that was a pretty easy one. Not a whole lot of, uh, you know, thought process going on right there. But this hand, this hand was real, real crazy. Um I'm going to be in a spot where I'm going to be getting a decent amount of money in here. You can see we we're kind of up in this session already to start things off. So, like, I wanted to play this hand. We got a king eight uh, suited. I think we're going to be dealing with, like, a four-bed situation here. And, you know, I was like, all right, let's let's uh, let's gamble. Let's, let's take a flop with this hand. And it was one of those flops where it was actually not bad um, at all because there was a lot of cards that could definitely help us out on the turn and river here, especially if this guy is representing... I mean, there's a few things you'd be representing. Obviously, those big pocket pairs, aces, kings, queens, um, ace, kings, suiteds. Uh, but he played this one like he had the goods for sure. But I wanted to make a call with this, and we did. And, uh, you know, we took a gamble with it. Just hoping for a good flop, right? Because we're already kind of getting invested into this one. So we, we definitely want to see something.
Okay, and there it is, guys. Uh, we are in a situation where, in my opinion, it's going to be hard to get away from this. Um, okay, he's got aces. Obviously not the turn card we wanted, but we got it on the river with the jack. So I'm not sure what the odds were getting it all in right there. Probably not very good for us, but at the same time, you know, uh, I took the gamble with it. It paid off. I, I don't even know. Maybe we were like a 35 to 65, something like that. I don't know. But up and down right there, couldn't get away from it. We put about, whatever, 100 bucks into it pre-flop, and it worked out. So, uh, yeah, the gamble paid off right there. Okay, and on to the final hand, uh, pocket deuces. This wasn't like the biggest hand ever, but I just kind of like threw it in here because it was a winner. And, <clears throat> you know, just kind of going through the hands that I, um, we just went through, uh, like I said, it's not like I was playing the greatest poker ever. I think the queen four, or whatever I had making that call was good. The king eight, I wanted to gamble with. When you're up some money in a session and you want to make that play, I think it's okay. Um, but a thing you got to realize about playing online poker, it's always going to be a different situation. You're always going to be playing with different players and, you know, you have to add bluffing into your game. You have to, you have to three bet, you have to four bet, you have to make <clears throat> tough decisions, right? It It's never going to be the same every time. And it's not like you're going to start playing online poker and be playing ABC poker, waiting for hands. The higher you move up in stakes, the players will get a little bit better. And obviously you have to adjust your game. You have to evolve your game and you have to just, yeah, I mean, you have to make plays. Okay. It, it's just part of it. But, um, we got lucky here. We did hit the deuce on the river. I put in like a hundred dollar bet here and we took it down, but to bring this all home guys, um, I hope you enjoyed some wins here on ignition. I've been playing here for like, uh, like I said, at least like seven years, um, I also play on Bovada, Bet Online, America's Card Room. I kind of keep, um, you know, all, all of them in my repertoire of places I play, and I really want to make, you know, the adjustment to play in more bigger payout tournaments this year. I think you guys should do it as well because you know it's always nice to try to hit a big score, and uh, there's always satellites you can get into too for some of the bigger ones, and why not, right? It just they take time. Um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed all these hands. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week. Like I said, we'll have some links below in the description for that. Tap that like if you haven't. Thanks for watching this, and we'll see you all in the next poker video.